So by the time you're done with your 12 frames, you've got fire that looks probably something like this. Now, because fire doesn't need to stay the same size uh, frame to frame, it's okay that it flickers around like that. It actually makes it look a little bit more realistic. Not that this looks very realistic, but it does clearly suggest to the viewer this is fire. This is a campfire, specifically. Now, what we're going to be doing for the next part is a little bit more complex, and this is the pose to pose section. This one, we do want to be able to have the drawing that is uh, consistent throughout, and uh, you want to try to be careful with it. So, you want to make sure that you're drawing something that is easily, to re easily repeatable. Okay? We're going to do some tricks to make sure that your repetitions are close to each other, but um, at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not trying to draw it too complicated, that you're spending too much time on every frame. Now, the first thing that I went and did was I set it to fit into window. And I wanted to fit into window so that I can see how much space I have overhead. Because here's what I want you doing for the next part of the assignment, the pose to pose part, is you are going to have uh, something jump over the fire. Okay, it's got 12 frames to do it. You can manage this. All right, so first up, I need to add a new layer here. So I don't need the fire layer accessible anymore. So I can go ahead and click the button to lock it. And I want to add a new layer here. Now my new layer, I'm going to call this jumper. You can call it person, you can call it character, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, it's uh, yours. Now the type of character that I'm going to work on for this is pretty simple. Um, just because I want you to understand the concept more than I want you to practice drawing. So what I'm going to do is start with the paintbrush tool. And for frame one, I'm going to draw my character. Now, there was one character in the Alan Becker video that I really liked, and it had a beak, and it had a body that was basically just a circle, and a little feather, a couple feathers on top of its head. Okay, and let's give it an eye there, and an eye there. And that was pretty horrible looking eye. That second one's pretty horrible too. I'm gonna give it eyes a little closer to there. There we go. I like that one better. And I'm gonna use the paint bucket tool to fill this one in black. And see if I can get that little line there. Okay, there we go. So he's got eyes and he's got a body and he's got a beak. And now I wanna give him a pair of legs. All right, so I'm going to zoom in one step just to help my drawing here. Okay, and I'm going to make a leg that comes down and comes out into these uh, little bird toes. I'm going to make the second one come down. And... As you can see, I'm not really too concerned with how neat it looks. If you've got a little spot that you want to erase over it, the eraser tool is right on there. It looks like a little block and you can zoom in is usually better. I didn't because I didn't. <laughs> not No real reason, I just didn't. All right, so now here we've got our jumper. He's on this layer here he's got a layer all to himself and he's just standing there looking at this fire that he needs to jump over and we're going to be doing this pose to pose so the first thing that we want to do is we want to establish our keys so our first key is right here our second key that i want to put in is going to be at the end so i'm going to go all the way to the end here and i can kind of cheat a little bit because when he's at the end he's just going to look exactly the same standing there so i'm going to go f6 then use the arrow tool, click on his eyeball there, and move him right across. And there he is at the end. So if I test my movie now, he's just going to flicker to the end. And he sits there for most of the time. Okay, so, or he sits at the front for most of the time. All right, so the next one 
Let me go back to fit in window. All right, the next frame that I want to do is the midpoint. All right, so I will duplicate this one again and I'm gonna go and move him up here, but obviously I don't want his feet like this. That doesn't look very realistic. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in on him again, and with my eraser tool, I need to clean up. I can make that bigger over here in properties, and I wanna clean up his legs like this. Okay, because the fire layer is locked, I can erase, and it looks like erase, it's erasing, but it won't. All right, and I left the little stumps there because, well, actually this one I don't want to leave. So I just want to carefully kind of erase that out. And then I want to draw in the next leg. Now, in order to try to keep them around the same size, I'm going to turn onion skin back on so that I can see roughly how big it is here. Okay, and whoa, my size is still turned up. Um, there we go. Let's bring it back down. And that's too small. What size was it at before? I should have probably looked. Um, no, I'm going to guess it was around three. All right. So this leg is coming out like that. Whoa, that's a little much. All right. This leg is coming out like this. It's hard for me to draw from so far away, apparently. All right, and the skinny little bird toes. Super basic leg. And then this one, I'm gonna just kind of come out like that. I liked the first part of it, but I wasn't liking the way the toes looked. All right. And that looks roughly the right size. So I'm gonna go back to fit in window. I now have my keys. Now the next thing to do is to start working on the extremes. The extremes are the midpoints in between. All right, so I go to frame three. And let's go ahead and um, press, I'm gonna do F6 again because the body doesn't change all that much, okay? But I need to drag him up over here. And I'm also going to add a little rotation to him. So he starts kind of shooting up towards the front. Okay, and then go back in to erase the legs again. And turn my eraser up. So often when you do pose to pose, you do have a mix of straight ahead as well as pose to pose. So this is the straight ahead portion. And let's go ahead and make this leg come out. I think I'm going to draw the feet in later because the feet seem to be giving me the most problems. I just don't like the way I keep redrawing them. Okay, and this leg is going to come out. We're going to bring it up nice and high here. All right. And then I can add the feet. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't seem to draw three lines like that right now. All right. So that leg is coming up like that. I can probably get in there and erase that stump of a leg that I left. There we go. All right. And the next one is the pose before landing. Okay. I'm going to go to frame nine and let's go ahead and duplicate that one. F6. And let's bring him, whoops. Let's bring him down closer. And again, I'm going to rotate him this way because he's getting ready to land. Definitely need to erase that foot so that he's not burning it in the flames. 
erase that one. All right, what would his foot be doing at this point? Let's go ahead and pull it back up higher. And we'll pull that one out and down some, like that. I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully, I can draw these feet a little bit better like that. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Drawing with a mouse is difficult. If you want to check out a graphic tablet from me to um, um, do the drawing, you can. Okay, so I can scrub forward and backwards. And if I didn't mention it in the previous video, if you want to increase or decrease how far your onion skin shows, it's these uh, little pieces out here that you can take the slider. So I can look at the entire animation at once from any point, Okay, if that's what I want to do. Okay, and typically with this technique, I, spe I do want to do that at first, at least. All right, so looking at our next one, it's now the breakdowns. So I'm going to repeat that process, basically, and go and let's put one right here at frame five. I thought I was supposed to have that at frame six. I'm going to drag that one to frame six. I'm not sure how I drug it before. You can move keyframes like that as well if you click and if you click on it once and then click and drag it, it will allow you to move the keyframe. Um, not sure why I didn't get it in the right spot the first time, but there it is. Um, so I can go to this one and let's do an F6 and move it. And basically, I'm just going to keep going with this guy. Okay. And I can probably go and rotate him a little bit so that he's starting to level out here. And let's do F6 again. Okay, at this point, I need that leg to start coming out. This leg is looking okay. Okay, but I could even make that one shift. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why you wanted to add those legs and everything first is so that you get a good idea of what's going to be happening. Um, because once you start getting all these extra lines and um, the onion skin going on, it can get a little confusing. Okay, so I go from here and draw in this leg. It's basically, I want to put in something between here and there. Whoa, not with a brush that big again. All right, so I go and put one out like this. So I can use that as kind of a tracing tool. Okay, I'm looking at this. I'm trying to make pretty much the same leg as this one and that one, but it's it's in a pose that's a little similar to both. So this one, same thing. It's this one, the knee's bent pretty much. This one, it's straightening out some more, so I want to get somewhere in between that. Okay. Go back to uh, fit in window. If I test my movie, you can see it's starting to work. That leg is moving. Okay, I'm still missing some frames in there. That's why the second part looks extra choppy. Um, but that's the same process. You're just going to go through and you just want to tweak uh, the legs. Now, if you've got arms on it as well, let's say I've got a bird wing here. I'm going to get up to this one. I might be making it up out a little bit more. Okay, and I take a look at what that one's doing and kind of make it the same sort of way. Let's make it up on this one. All right, so then as it starts coming through, you see that wings start to raise up. And then that wing could be, work its way back down as it gets down towards uh, the other side. I've got one more to add right here. For this one, what I want is more of this second look. OK, 
Okay, so what I'll do is here on this frame, press F6, and that's where we're going to raise it up. Now, those that are looking at this going, well, what about anticipation? Um, you're right, it doesn't have anticipation in it yet. Okay, and that is something that you are more than welcome to put into it. You could add a little bit more throughout to uh, do so. Um, I just wanted to keep it simple for the purpose of demonstrating the um, pose to pose versus straight ahead animation. All right, so this one is up. It's going to have a little bit of a bend to it. Yeah, drawing the toes for me is a lot easier if I zoom in. All right, and let's go back to the eraser and get that last little piece out. Give that a little curl here. And let's go back to fit in window. Okay, and I can scrub this forward and backwards. I can clearly see what the legs are doing. All right, and then I just want to then do the other half of it pretty much the same way. Where you can, duplicate frames. Oh, I forgot a wing on that second one. Nope, the wing's there. Okay, where you can, duplicate the frames. Okay, um, that will save some work for you. All right, by the time you're done, you will have an animated sequence of uh, the the your character jumping over the flames.